Hello, my name is Joseph Bernal, and I will be your instructor for the semester. And I, what I want to do is just go over some of the basics of the course, uh, the syllabus, and kind of orient you with getting into Blackboard and where you can find all the stuff that we'll be using for the class. Great. So if you take a look on the left hand side of the screen, you'll have our syllabus and has some basic information like that. And you can also download a copy. If you look up on the very top, there's a PDF link right there. You can download a copy as well if you want to print it out for yourself. And what we're doing is introduction to ethics. And so ethics is kind of a broad field. And so since it's an introduction course, what we're doing is uh, a little bit of everything. I'm just giving you guys a taste of you know, the whole field of ethics. Uh, we can't cover everything in all of ethics, but we can try to cover some of the main points of this main discussions that are going on. So since this is a completely online course, and it's asynchronous, meaning that we don't have a particular set class time. So unlike a synchronous class where they would meet at a particular time for lecture or anything like that, uh, we don't do that in this class. What we're doing is a course where it's your responsibility to log in uh, throughout the week and making sure that you're keeping up with the assignments and the readings. So that's kind of a tough part for a lot of people is making the schedule that for themselves and keeping to that schedule. So be mindful of that. Now you can reach me uh, here on Blackboard. You'll see on the left hand side of the screen, towards the bottom, there's an email section. You can also reach me during office hours, and the office hours are going to be from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Thursdays, unless you uh, want to schedule a particular one on one appointment. Uh, you just have to email and let me know and see how I can accommodate. But during the office hours and video conferences, you can just click on where it's up here on the far bottom of the screen on the left hand side of where it says video conference and office hours. If you click on that, you'll see a page open up where I've opened up office hours. Of course, it's not office hours right now, but when it is so, uh, this link where it says office hours will be open. You can simply click on it and I'll be there to answer any questions. You don't have to turn on your camera if you don't like to or anything like that. Uh, but if you just like to ask questions about the course or where we're at, you're welcome to do so. Now, let's go to the next section. The next section is required text. So what are you gonna need? Fortunately, what I'm trying to do is provide everybody the ability to take this course without spending money on a textbook. And so you'll see what we have here is a link and it sends you to a designated site where it has a lot of great information on introduction to philosophy. It's open up, it's open for everybody. And you'll see this here. And it has chapters. And what we'll do be going throughout the semester is different chapters. Uh, we'll start with chapter one. And when you click on that, you'll see particular uh, page open up and videos. And you can just hit next here on the bottom to go to the next section. Now, unfortunately, the website is a little old, and so some links may not work for the videos, but that doesn't mean you're losing out on material, though. So uh, all the material was there, and primarily, when we go back to the syllabus, we'll also be working with designated uh, PDF readings that I've provided, and, we'll, and I'll show you that a little bit right now when we get to uh, the schedule regarding the course. And here's some helpful websites as well that will come in handy throughout the semester. You'll be writing some papers for me, so those do have to be cited. I'm looking at college level papers, of course, and they should be cited. Alfred is a great site. It provides a citation. Um, let's see if we click on this link here, great. Provides a lot of great citation 
recommendations and how rules, uh, examples. So if you're choosing APA or MOA, they're both there, avoiding plagiarism. There's all these great uh, guides that Al Purdue provides for you to do really well in the course and write really great papers. So not just uh, for this class, but I think for any class where you're writing papers, uh, remember Al Purdue, keep it as a bookmark and you'll come back to it for sure. And then the other one is the Internet, Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy. It's a great resource and for some basic stuff if we don't, uh, if you're looking for more information that's outside of the class, outside of the material recovery, uh, check out the encyclopedia. It's really great. And let's see what else. So Blackboard, I know it's not always perfect. There are problems occasionally. So Remember this number here? If there's a technical support issue. Now, for most things I can probably help with, right? Let's say uh, something, you know, the link wasn't working on our page or something. You don't take a look at that. But if it's a more technical thing, let's say Blackboard shut down and you can't even log in at all, it's kind of out of my jurisdiction. So, what you want to do is contact this number on the syllabus, and that's the number that you'll be using to uh, get some help. And they're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So anytime you need help, they're there. And that's part of the program. So what are the assignments? Well, there's a couple of major assignments that are going to be coming up. There's a logic quiz. And well, what's logic? Logic is a particular way of thinking and reasoning. and especially in philosophy. And so I'll be teaching you guys the first couple of weeks into logic and how to do that. And so it, don't worry, don't get intimidated. It'll be a couple of weeks, uh, the first three weeks and after the first three weeks, you'll have a quiz over that. Uh, it's not too uh, hefty the quiz, but it does require you to study and pay attention to those three weeks of the material we're going over, or it's gonna be very difficult difficult for you to pass the class or that quiz in particular. Uh, now the group PowerPoint, there is a group assignment. I know people are not always dance at group assignments. And I understand that and I've been through that myself. Uh, but it is a necessary evil and learning those skills to work with each other. This is where I say a lot of the real ethics is taking place is how do you work with other people? How do you navigate and as a team and work, work work together, it does take a lot of compromise. It takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of deciding what is right and what is wrong. So those are where the real ethics I think is taking place. Now, the assignment itself is not too overwhelming, I think. What you're going to be doing is just simply developing a PowerPoint on a, with your group on a designated chapter or section or reading. And I've already listed that. I've already prepared all that stuff for you. So your group, and where are you, are you going to find information about your group? You can do so right here in the link. At the very bottom says PowerPoint Group Workspaces. You'll click that. Now, of course, I'm not in a group, so it's not going to show a group. But when you do so, uh, your group will be there. It will say who you're, who's on your team. And there you can open up. Uh, discussion between yourselves. You can uh, exchange files and so information and uh, have meetings there, video conferences there if you if you want to do that. So you can do everything within that little hub that's going to be for your particular group. So you don't have to go around and find information. All that information is there for you. Now the assignment itself, what you're going to do is actually just Come up with a PowerPoint that that addresses these things that I formatted as a format checklist. So make a general statement about the topic. So what is the what is the topic of the material you wrote, the paper you, you read, you're supposed to write about? Um, come up with a very short, nice summary of well, what was discussed. What were the main points? And also provide questions and answers that aim at clarifying or analyzing the text. So what questions did you and your team have as you're reading it? 
And it's probably likely that your classmates had the same questions too. So put that out there. What answers did your team come up with for those type of questions that you guys faced when you were developing your, your PowerPoint? Uh, share that information. And define important vocabulary terms. So there might be terms that are you're not familiar with. You have to look up. You know, there's a lot of big words in, um, in philosophy, epistemology, uh, metaphysics, things like that will always come up. So take the time to actually make sure that you're defining those terms if you come across something when you're reading it. And again, your peers probably have the same questions and would appreciate that as well. And use original examples to explain. And this is why I think is really uh, fruitful and helps you remember, not just for the presentation, but helps you remember for the class and the material is that you come up with your own examples on how you relate to what you're reading. And that really helps stick and resonate with a lot of people. And so when you come with your PowerPoint and you address those elements, uh, that is gonna be worth 10% of your grade. So as a group, you're going to uh, submit that. You, as you can see, there's gonna be a section called um, right here, Blackboard uh, PowerPoint assignment. You just click on that and you'll see the group folder open up. And this is where you'll see the list of all the dates that your group is going to be presenting on, who's in there, and also instructions. And also here you're going to provide, uh, you're going to submit it there. So you go to instructions and open it up. Uh, this is where you'll find the information and anything that you need on the PowerPoint. And let me go back a second in the PowerPoint assignment in the folder. Now the next thing is a report. And again, I've already anticipated and teach it for a while. I've already anticipated that students are going to say, well, wait a minute. So, so didn't really help out. They didn't really pitch in and get all the work myself. So here's your chance to kind of set things straight. So only one person has from the group has to submit the PowerPoint. However, there's going to be a report, and the report here is going to be a template, and you'll see it a bit right now when I open it up. So the template is going to be something you're going to fill out information on how your group did at that particular time. So you're gonna put your name, the subject or the chapter, what you presented on, its due date, and then the activities that were completed, who did what, right? This is where you're also gonna include a task. So who was responsible for coming up with slides one, two, three, or on that particular introduction issue? When were they supposed to turn it into the group by those things? Issues that came up, well, somebody was late or somebody didn't turn those in, let me know. And any comments, and it could be good or bad. Preferably, I hope good that you guys work together, that uh, people were really helpful, that you were in, insightful, that you guys really watched out for each other. So I hope I see those kind of reports. But those are, these reports you're going to fill out in Word, you're going to save it, and then you're going to upload it over here. Uh, when you submit the report. And then when you do so, and you click on that, see so you can attach over here files, and you submit that report, and I'll write along with the PowerPoint. If there's any questions or issues, I'll address those to the group as well. So that's also gonna be worth 10%. Now, the next thing are discussion posts. So we're an online course, and I know we're gonna have a lot of back and forth and discussions. So this is where you're gonna submit, uh, there's gonna be 10 discussion posts in total throughout the semester, throughout the week, and you'll see on the schedule right now. Now, Sundays are when they usually open up the new discussion posts, and then the following Sunday it's due. And so for the discussion post, you're going to open up the discussion and you're going to uh, provide answers on questions that I had over the week. And 
to make it a very good answer, I'm requiring you to provide at least three full paragraphs detailing your response for those questions. So it's not really simple yes or no questions. It's going to be ones that you really have to think about and read about and, and kind of formulate your ideas on. So they are going to take at least three paragraphs, and that's a requirement. So two paragraphs, one paragraph does not slide. Three full paragraphs and make sure that you're inventing and it's clear that where the paragraphs are, not one big block of text. I also highly recommend that you do so. Uh, type your answers in Word. First, proofread them. And then when you're ready and you think you're ready, you have your best answer, then you can just copy and paste and submit those into the into the discussion post. Also, you're going to be responsible for responding to your peers' posts as well, right? Now, those should be at least two paragraphs long. So again, you can't simply say, oh, good, great job, awesome, and then that, that was your participation. That's not, that doesn't really count. You do have to provide clear feedback. Maybe it wasn't all great. Maybe they missed some parts of the reading. Maybe they were kind of a little bit confused about uh, this or that part in the chapter. This is where you're supposed to help each other out. This is, you guys are a team, a group. You're all here together to learn. So help each other understand. Do what you can so you can make those adjustments. And so from the discussions, when we get to the exams and the essays, everybody has a clearer idea of what the material is about. Don't wait until last minute or don't go confused throughout the entire semester not really sure, and then at the very end, like, oh, I don't know why I got such a poor grade, I thought I understood. You know, give each other feedback. Now, I'm looking for constructive criticism. Let me, let me make that clear. So there's a series of netiquette rules that I'm requiring for this class. They're pretty straightforward and simple. I think most people are respectful, but to just keep in mind, if it's, make it clear, I want to, I want to do so. Don't uh, don't personally attack somebody, right? Uh, you're really looking at the ideas and not the person. You're not calling somebody stupid or anything like that. It's really like, you know what? Actually, this is a really difficult issue, and let me exp let me help explain. Maybe this is the difference between this concept and that concept. Maybe something like that. You know. You're welcome to use uh, emoticons and stuff. That helps actually avoid a lot of misunderstandings. If you text your friends and family, you know, sometimes emojis actually kind of help. So you're welcome to use emojis, but do so in a respectful way. And being polite, it is complicated. Different families have different notions of politeness. But an overall general rule is, you know, try to, try to approach it respectfully in the sense that, you know, don't assume that you know what the person is, um, where they're coming from or what they're thinking. So sometimes it's actually really helpful to, have, to respond with questions. So well, what did you mean by this part? Or can you kind of clarify that part? And this is where you have a better notion of communication. Uh, that's what requires active listening, right? Can you catch you really to what they're saying and not just kind of jump into assumptions? And so when you provide feedback, do so. It doesn't always have to be so-called positive feedback, meaning that it doesn't have to be congratulations or that. You can say, well, hey, maybe um, I disagree on that point, but maybe you can explain a little bit further and, and maybe I can see if you can, I can understand you, what you're trying to say a little bit better. Things like that. I would like to see that. This is uh, this is ethics. It's going to be a lot of hot button issues, but that doesn't mean we're shying away from the controversy. We are trying to approach it head on, but we're going to do so in a respectful manner. Now, the next big assignment are three applied responses. What are applied responses? Well, don't worry. I have instructions for everything and. 
You'll see in detail what's expected. I have rubrics for all assignments. And what they are, in short, are like mini essays. They're going to be about 800 words or more. So I do have a word limit. They have to be a certain length. Uh, you do have to cite, like I mentioned, APA or MOA. And that's where that Al Purdue website will be helpful. You're going to provide in-text citations. What does that mean, in-text citations? In-text citations are where you're providing me the page number, where you got this information in the writing, in the sentence. So depending on how you're, what citation approach APA or MOA you're using, it might be a little bit different how you do that, but make sure that you're doing so. So if you're providing information that is not common knowledge, that is actually right from the text where you just read, then you're going to have to cite that, tell me where exactly you found that information, the page numbers and authors' names and such. Now there's three of them, so, you, so they are a big chunk of your grade. They're going to work 20% all together. So take those very seriously. They're not things to kind of blow off. They do really uh, affect your grade. Now the midterm, you're going to have a midterm exam, and it's going to be a mixture of uh, multiple choice questions, uh, short answer questions and long answer questions. Short answer questions are are a couple of paragraphs. Long answer questions are again uh, quite a few more, four paragraphs or more, something like that. Is what I'm looking at. And so those are going to be some real um, questions where you really again have to think. This is why the discussion posts are kind of prepping you and building you up. So for the midterm and the final, which are going to be in very similar formats, but just different material, uh, that's what you're going to be looking for. So in the midterm, you're going to be answering questions that was over material from weeks one through eight. And then on the final paper, you're going to be looking at questions that are from the midterm onwards to the end of the class. And you're going to submit those all through Blackboard. But what I, again, just like the discussion questions, what I highly recommend is that you write it in Word first, proofread it, and then save it so you don't lose your answers. And then you can copy and paste those answers into Blackboard. Now, the midterm and the final exams are not timed, so you don't have to worry about that. They're open for a couple of days. You can think about them. But that also tells you that they're not going to be easy, right? I'm giving you the time to kind of research this and look back and at your notes and write really good responses. Make sure you're taking that time to do so. Don't just quickly try to do it in one day and just get it, get it over with. Not the way to take these uh, exams. And then the same thing with the final I just mentioned. Where it's the same format, just different questions. And that's it pretty much uh, rounds up what the assignments are going to be for this semester. Now, for policies, attendance, of course, I can't take attendance in the normal way. Uh, it's an asynchronous course. But what I will be considering, and I can see this through Blackboard, is how many times you're logging in throughout the week. And I highly recommend that you be logging in at least three to four times during the week. It's going to take around 12 to 15 hours a week that you're engaging with the picture, reading the material, you're working on the discussion, um, you're thinking about your applied responses. Those are all going to take a lot of hours throughout the week. So don't just blow it off. Do not just wait until Sunday and then try to figure out anything. I will actually have different due dates and different times for different assignments. So. They're not all going to be due on Monday. Don't expect that. Take a look and make sure you know exactly when the assignments are due. Late work, I'm not going to be accepting. I don't usually accept late work. Now, I will consider some late work if you have some sort of emergency or something came up. Then I, I please talk to me, especially beforehand. And I'll try to accommodate, 
But if you're just kind of, well, I didn't turn it in, I forgot, and then two weeks later, can I make it up? That's not really going to fly. I want to see actually, especially the discussion posts, I've had students try to do that. Uh, if you try to turn in something um, late, I will consider it. I still want to see that attempt, but you will lose points the longer that you have not uh, turned it in. And at some point, as I'm saying, like two weeks, it's just that you're not getting any credit for that. It's just too long. So keep that in mind and look at the rubrics uh, for the assignments. You will see how much time I will give you uh, for, for those assignments. Uh, make it work in exams. Like I said, I, the dates are already set for the midterm and for the final and, and all the assignments. So please talk to me way before I'm the earlier the better if you have some sort of medical issue like you're going to have surgery or something like that. Please talk to me so I, I know it's keeping the loop so I know what's going on. Now, plagiarism, uh, oh, I forgot to mention also, uh, there is a statement that we're required to provide, it's really important as well. Uh, that is the American Disabilities Act, that EBCC, we're trying to make sure that we let everybody know that we do offer services for uh, individuals who have maybe sensory, mental, physical, or any sort of condition that's interfering with doing well, you know, and exceeding well in the courses. Please contact them at these numbers here. Register with them. If you, if you do have documentation, please let them know so they will let me know how to accommodate and how I can help you. So if you need more time on a test or, or something like that or an exam, they're going to have to send me an email from that office letting me know that, you know, to give you time and a half or something like that. But I do have to get that email from them. So make sure it's best if you have to do that, do it the sooner, uh, sooner the better. So everything is set up once the assignments are committed. Now, plagiarism and cheating. Um, of course, I've had students in the past <laughs> try to get by and not without, you know, really doing their work. Or uh, some, unfortunately, a lot have to do with just not learning how to cite properly and, and committing plagiarism without really understanding and knowing about that. Don't be that person. That's why I said Al Purdue was a great site. It shows you, you know, tips to avoid plagiarism, how to cite properly. But again, if you have questions, there's a tutoring center. And there's myself and plenty of YouTube websites, online websites to help you. There's a lot of great information. So don't just assume, well, I don't know and I didn't understand and then that was it. Don't be that person. Now, withdrawing, if it's a withdrawal from the course, please uh, let me know. Uh, but you will have to fit a uh, figure out and register, talk to the registration's office and go through the official channels, the paperwork and all that, that's required to do so. I'm not gonna do it for you and then simply just drop you. Uh, talk to me, that, let me know that you're dropping the course and and also make sure you're contacting the, the official registrar's office and going through the right process. And for financial aid issues, uh, again, if that, that's your financial aid was trying to be close, please talk to the financial aid office. They're the people to talk to to give you guidance on that. I'm not a financial advisor, but I don't want to give you any sort of misinformation, right? And participation, uh, I always used to say read before class, but now I realize that reading doesn't mean the same thing for students as it does for professors, I would say a better word is analyze, analyze the text. Make sure you really thought about what you read uh, before you do the discussion posts, before you do the exams. Uh, this is a really engaging course. It doesn't seem like it because it's a lot of links and online stuff, but it's a really engaging course in that you really have to 
engage and wrestle with the material, what you've read. Talk to your friends, talk to your family about what you've read. Uh, talk to your group members, get feedback. Uh, that's how I still work with a lot of papers that I write because I get feedback from my peers and say, is this a good idea? Is this not a good idea? I'm not sure if I quite understand this. Uh, and that's how we all learn. Now, assignments, like I said, the due dates and everything are already kind of set and I give you plenty of time to know what's going on. Uh, but if there are sort of emergencies or, or accommodations or something's going on, um, I've had students deal with pregnancy, all sorts of uh, medical issues. Please let me know ahead of time and I will try to help you as best as I can. Uh, and I will do so by through the official EPCC email system. So make sure you're going through the system, you're contacting me through not your Gmail, not your uh, Facebook, not, not Facebook, please don't contact me through Facebook. Uh, do so through the official uh, channels. So I know I can keep track of what class you're in. Uh, that's a random person emailing me out of the blue. And uh, there's a back and forth that's well documented. So if you have to turn something in, you have to give me some sort of documentation. Uh, it's in their official system. And if it's lost for some reason, that's where the IT department comes and helps us out. Now for the schedule, you'll see all the links for all the readings are already embedded. So all you have to do is click the link and it'll open up in a new page. And that's where you'll be reading from. And so for the first couple of weeks, we're going to be looking over this great uh, section of a book that I, I was able to provide to us as in PDF form. It's called Moral Reasoning by Lewis Vaughn. It's a chapter out of one of his books. It's really great. It explains how we develop arguments. How do we evaluate arguments? Is this a good argument? Is this a bad argument in ethics? You know, so this is helping your writing as well and helping evaluate, you know, the people that you're going to be reading later, the, the material. Is this a good argument? Is philosophy providing or not? And so we'll be doing that the first couple of weeks. There's going to be a PowerPoint that I provided over the material. That's where that link is from. Uh, the material reading, just don't use the PowerPoint. It doesn't make sense unless you're, you know, using the official reading. The PowerPoint, again, is just shorthand, you know, information for what you assume and have already read in your text. And then I also have a lecture video that, that accompanies that. So that you know, you know what you should be uh, paying attention to, and that video is here as well. And so I also have a link to this video, of course, that you're watching. Uh, if you need to go back and and see what I said about people assignments or anything that's in this. And so then, as we go, you'll see there's assignments every week. Uh, there's usually a discussion post, and our first team who's going to put together a PowerPoint for us, and this is where partly the reasoning for the PowerPoint I forgot to mention is that a lot of students would ask me before, oh, can I get a copy of the PowerPoints? Um, that's not really helpful, actually, because the PowerPoints are other people's notes. And so people, I have students I've noticed kind of try to use the PowerPoints and say, well, it saves me the time of reading and I'll just go over the notes. That's not how this class works. Uh, some of the stuff we're going to be reading is actually really complicated and is not kind of memorized and then just, you know, hope you fill out some multiple choice. That's not going to work for this class. What you're going to have to do is really read about these articles. And so, like, one of the first uh, major articles that we're going to read is this one that provided here called Gen Ed's Sucker You. Now, what this is a paper is, is a kind of professional paper written by a philosopher. It doesn't sound like it with the title, but they have a good point on what they're trying to say. And so this is stuff that you're not going to find on cheat sheets, or you're not going to be able to just kind of like Google and then find like answers to. That's not how it works. These are papers that uh, are very unique. They're written by particular philosophers, particular ideas. So there's no way to kind of avoid, you know, actually 
sitting there going with the text. But what you can do, and this is where I think it's really helpful for the PowerPoint assignment, when your team comes up with a PowerPoint for one of these readings, we're going to share that with the rest of the class. After, of course, everybody's supposed to have read it. And that PowerPoint is going to be our sort of material. This is where we're going to have this section about student-made PowerPoints, where you're going to be able to look at uh, team's PowerPoints um, from previous groups and they can say, oh, this is really helpful. I like what they did here. And it's a, I find students helping students is a better way to learn material, remember material. Uh, just going by what the teacher says is usually a good way to kind of forget material. <laughs> so there's going to be student-made PowerPoints and they're going to be able to be downloaded as we progress. You know, so after team one is done, I'll have their PowerPoint to the group team two and so on. And so we'll have discussion posts, the PowerPoint, and then you'll see uh, week nine, we have the midterm and that's gonna be covering everything, all these links and material that we talked about uh, up to that point. And also we're gonna have, uh, right before the midterm, before I almost forget, is the first applied response. So you'll be working on their first mini essay there over the material for week eight. And so by week nine, you have a couple of days, of course, I said it was pretty open about the time limit for the midterm. And you're gonna submit that. And then we'll come back to discussion questions and working on our PowerPoint. And then the second apply response will come in in week 11. And then take a little bit further. We actually have the holiday and towards the end of the semester. I think we've got to put it here. <laughs> and we'll make sure to do so. Uh, we're gonna have also the discussion, uh, the the last, uh, the third applied response due. And actually that's gonna be in week 13. And I'll make sure to remind everybody and have that on the syllabus. Uh, sorry for forgetting myself. So. Again, I'm human, we all forget things, but we do have to be careful and catch things and help each other out, right? And then the finally on December 7th at, for 8 p.m., the final is due and that's the, it, the final exam is gonna open up on finals week and you'll have until the 7th to complete it. And that'll be the semester. So that's, in a nutshell, what you're looking at for this semester, I hope that this is as well. I hope this is becoming a really great learning environment. Um, I hope we are here to help each other out, to learn from each other. And I wish you guys all the best luck. I'm really looking forward to the semester. I love having discussions with students, uh, introducing them to new material. So even though we're online and we're not face-to-face, -face, I will try to make this as close to a face-to-face -face class as I can. So I wish you guys luck and have a great semester.